Today, I'm going to make AI write code for me. How am I going to do that? Using ChatGPT. What is ChatGPT, you might ask? ChatGPT is a new AI chatbot created by OpenAI that can answer pretty much anything, with the ability to answer follow-up questions, admit its own mistakes, and challenge incorrect premises. Watch to the end to see it answer one of my old algorithm homework questions. When you first sign up for the website, you get this little pop-up that says this is a free research preview. And they have two little disclaimers here. The first one is our goal is to get external feedback in order to improve our systems and make them safer. And the second one is while we have safeguards in place, the system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information and produce offensive or biased content. It is not intended to give advice. So you hit next, talk about collecting data and then feedback. All right, so now we're in chat GPT. And this is my first time ever looking at this and my first time ever asking it to code. So let's see what it can do. So the first thing that catches my eye here is in the examples, it's how do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript? So let's click that and then send it. So I'm gonna start off with some simple questions first about programming and let's see how it reacts. All right, so it's reacting here, it's typing. To make an HTTP request in JavaScript, you can use this object or the fetch function. Here's an example of how to use HTML HTTP request to make an HTTP GET request to fetch a list of users from a server. And it's literally coding this shit at the same time as it's explaining it. And you can copy code from it. I didn't even ask it to code anything specifically, but it's showing me all these code examples and I can actually use them. And honestly, they look pretty good. So let's look. XHR, we got semicolons. Yeah, it looks like semicolons on every line. Still using some old before ES6 syntax here for JavaScript. Then they also use arrows here. So it's kind of a mix and match. Fetch dot then dot then. So using promises. Okay, both of these examples. So, okay, they showed me two different examples. Fetch and XML HTTP request. Wow, wow, that's pretty crazy. I'm gonna ask it to code hello world in assembly. How do I code? Hello world in assembly. Let's see if it can code hello world in assembly. Okay, so it's explaining here. And notice how like human-like the response is. It's like someone else is on the other side actually responding. Wow, okay, so it's coding here. The exact syntax for writing hello world in assembly language depends on the specific assembly language and the system it's intended to run on. Which is true. It's true. There's different architectures. Here's an example of how you might write a hello world program in assembly language for the x86 architecture. Wow, section data and then hello world string and then moving all the stuff. And it even has comments. Like it tells you what it's doing. It's not just the code. It says like move EAX4 and it's telling you this is a system call number for sys underscore write. This is a file descriptor for standard output. This is the address of the string to write, etc, etc. And so it has a comment for every line of code. It's very descriptive. This code uses the x86 assembly language and the Linux syscall convention for system calls. And so yeah, it tells you everything. Wow, so this AI can tell you how to code hello world in assembly. So let's ask it, let's ask it some other questions. Let's ask it, how do I solve P? equals np. Let's see if it can solve this question. Question of whether p equals np is a famous unsolved problem in computer science. So it's just telling me about this. Okay, currently there's no known solution. It's not clear whether p equals np or not. The problem is considered to be extremely difficult, and despite much research, no definitive progress has been made towards solving it. If you're interested, you can read more about it in the Wikipedia article. So we can't solve p equals np, sadly. AI is not that advanced yet. All right, so for a computer science class I was taking called Operating Systems, we had to write kernel modules and character devices. So I'm gonna ask it how I can write a character device. How do I write a character device? for the Linux kernel. And let's see if it can give me some examples on how to code this. All right, requires advanced knowledge of C programming and Linux kernel internals. It's true. Here's a high level overview. Define a structure that represents your character device, including its name, major, minor numbers, file operations, and any other relevant data. Yes, this makes a lot of sense, and this is what I did. Implement the file operations for your character device, such as open, read, write, and close. Yep, it's actually kind of scary how accurate this is. Like this might be better than a lot of professors explaining stuff. And it's telling you, you know, register this character device. Yep, you gotta create, but it's also not giving me any code. So maybe I can ask it to code a character device for the Linux kernel. 
Let's see if it can give me some code. Okay, so it even has the ability to know what it mentioned earlier, just saying, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, oh wow, it is giving me a example here. Here's a simple example. This code defines a character device with a single read operation that always returns the same string. Okay, yeah, module, all the Linux includes. Look at that. It's literally writing my computer science project right now. It's kind of scary. It even has the errors like eFault, you know, my read. Yeah, this is, I've seen this snippet online. So I think it learns from all this stuff like Stack Overflow, but I think Stack Overflow banned this, banned chat GBT from its site. So it can learn from other sites. All right, I don't know what happened, why, why it's red now. What does this say? I don't know what happened, but I think it, I think it glitched out here. But honestly, like, look at this code. It's it's pretty similar to actually what I wrote. So if I go to my GitHub here and I actually look like what I wrote, look how similar this looks. The read and all of this stuff. Look at the write section. It's very similar to what the AI wrote for me. You know, if max bytes is greater than length, like you look at this. You know, if bytes to coffee is greater than length, then set it and then copy to user. So. It can really learn from all this internet stuff. It's really, really cool. You might not need to Google as much now as a software engineer. All right, now I'm gonna ask it a question. Which programming language do you prefer? Let's see if it has a sense of self. Oh, it looks like there was a network error. I'm gonna refresh it here. Okay, which programming language do you prefer? All right, let's see. So it knows that it's a language model and it doesn't have any personal preferences. Oh, that's kind of sad. I was hoping it had an opinion. All right, I'm sure a lot of you know about Terry Davis and how he wrote Holy C and the whole Temple OS. He's a very interesting character and he has a couple videos on YouTube that you can watch. I think he has passed away now, but he was a very interesting character. You know, basically this is kind of humiliating. What do you do? You just, you just act like a monkey. I don't. I don't fucking plan the melody in my head. Are you kidding me? No, I just fucking hit keys and then repeat it and see if it sounds good. I'm gonna ask this AI if it can code hello world in holy C. Code hello world in holy C. Let's see if it knows this very obscure language. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you mean by holy C. Could you please provide some more information or context? Okay, so maybe if I provide it some information or context, it'll know. Can you... All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to it like a real person, you know? Holy C was made by Terry, was created by Terry Davis, the same person who created Temple OS. Maybe it can write hello world now. Damn, it's not familiar with Holy C or Temple OS. All right, so maybe it doesn't know how to code in Holy C. That's kind of sad. I'm gonna ask it if it can code an algorithm for me. All right, I'm gonna ask it a hard question. I'm gonna ask it to code a Fibonacci heap. Code a Fibonacci heap, but we're gonna make it code it in Java. Let's see if it can do it. I'm sorry, but I don't have the ability to write or execute code. What do you mean? You were just writing the code. All right, so I guess I gotta ask it, how can I code a Fibonacci heap in Java? Maybe. This will give me some examples. All right, here we go. So it's gonna give me an explanation about what a Fibonacci heap is and then the steps to implement it. So maybe while it's explaining this, it will also give me an example further on. But if it doesn't, I can also ask it to. But it's giving me some pretty good detailed information here. This is almost like reading a computer science project, you know, how to implement a Fibonacci heap or like a homework really cool. Now, I'm sure this AI could help you in a ton of classes and it's not just computer science. This could help you in anything. And I've been reading about it. A lot of people in academia and like high school are kind of scared because it can, it can write essays that are indistinguishable from human writing and it might even be better. So that's something to worry about. I don't know how we're going to regulate that at all. All right, looks like it looks like it had a network error. I'm gonna refresh here and then ask it code a Fibonacci heap in Java, or I'm just gonna tell it Fibonacci heap in Java. Show me an example. Let's see if it can do that. It doesn't let me type until it's finished. Oh shit, it's already giving me the example. Okay, public class Fibonacci heap. There we go. We got the the root node here size of the nodes. I didn't even have to say show me an example. It's already showing me the example. And it the thing is it has all the comments too. Like it's very descriptive. Like every line is commented. Like the value of the node, the parent children of the node, and then this function creates a new Fibonacci heap. Returns the number of elements in the heap. You know, adds a new value to the heap. 
like it's every almost every line of code is commented and it gives you this really good understanding so okay it had a network error but you get the gist of it like it's coding for me okay i'm gonna ask you some debugging questions now and let's see if it can help me debug some stuff so i think a simple bug can just be like oh i forgot to npm install so why isn't this running so let's ask the open api chatbot that and let's see if it can solve it so here I have known modules. I'm just gonna delete them real quick. And this is like, I never ran npm install. So here we go. So now if I try to run the React app and do npm start, it says React scripts command not found. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this whole line and I'm gonna go back to our OpenAI chatbot, chat GPT. And I'm gonna ask it, um, I'm just gonna paste this in. Let's see if it recognizes how to help. Okay, so it straight up just tells me this error message indicates that the React Scripts command is not recognized by your system. This could mean that the React Scripts package is not installed or is not added to your system's path. So it does have, it is kind of right. To fix this error, you can try the following steps. Make sure you've installed the React Scripts package. Okay, and it's telling you, you know, run npm install. Make sure the node modules bin directory is added to your path. So it's giving me more than one solution for this bug. And the first one is honestly the right solution. When I run npm install react scripts, the node, when I run npm install react scripts and I try to do npm start again, it will give me another error, but this time it'll tell me, you know, you need to install this other package. So I might figure out that I just need to run npm install. So this is good advice. This is really cool. Now I'm gonna ask you some general knowledge questions. Like how do I, create an AWS batch job, right? So imagine you needed to do that for your work or a project. And let's see what it says. It looks like it's taking a while here. All right, here we go. To create an AWS batch job, you will need to perform the following steps. Okay, sign in, you know, in the AWS batch console, create a new job queue. So I'm sure this is taking it off the AWS docs, but honestly, it simplifies it a little bit more. So like this is very readable and it might actually be easier to understand than all these really confusing docs that sometimes you run into while trying to set up all these AWS services or Azure services or whatever else. Yeah, so it gave me all the steps I needed to do that. It's pretty cool. It's not very descriptive, but I'm sure I can ask a follow-up question. And so you can use this as a software developer, you know, to ask any questions that you need while you're developing. So for example, if I was using Python and I forgot, you know, how I can open a file with Python, I could be like, how can I open a file with Python 3? Question mark. And it'll tell me, instead of just Googling, it'll give me like steps and it actually might give me more than one solution. It's like a knowledge aggregator. It aggregates all of the knowledge on the internet and then it gives you, and then it gives you it in like a human-like form. It's basically a person who knows everything. So, okay, to open a file with Python 3, use the built-in open function. And there we go. We got a really nice example here too. Very simplistic. And again, every line is commented. It also gives a nice explanation here at the end, just like it does on most of them. So yeah, this is a really, really exciting tool here. This is, this is sick. Oh, it's giving me a second example again. You can also use the with statement to open a file. So it's giving me a different example here. I can be like with open instead of just F equals open. Oh, network error. But yeah, you get the point. It's really cool. Going back to debugging again, I'm actually going to ask it a question involving some code and ask it why it's not working. So I'm gonna make it pretty simple. I'm gonna be like, why isn't my C++ code working? And then I'm going to put in you no know, string, test string equals, and then like a number. And let's see if it can recognize this line as an error so it's taking its time and thinking here wow it actually knows what i'm doing wrong it looks like you're trying to assign an integer value to a string variable well yeah that's exactly what i'm trying to do in c you can't do this because a string is a sequence of characters while an integer is a number to fix this error you need to convert the integer value to a string before assigning it to the string variable and then it gives you an example so it can actually interpret code that you give it too and tell you what's wrong with it and how to do it better. Wow, and it's really acting like a human. Like, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. But yeah, this example is a little, little complex for, like the explanation is right, but I think this example is just trying to show how you can convert it to a string, which the first explanation tells you that it's just wrong. Still really cool, it knows how to correct it. Okay, so I had this one class last semester, design and analysis of algorithms. And the instructor was Alan Sherman. He gave us really, really hard homework. So I'm wondering if this AI can actually help me do some of this homework. 
Okay, so homework one was looping algorithms asymptotics. Okay, problem one, problem three, two. Okay, so indicate for each pair of expressions A, B in the table below whether it whether A is big O, little O, big omega, little omega, etc. etc. And then okay, so I'm just gonna ask it, you know. Okay, I'm gonna ask it like a simpler question. Let's do this. Let's see if it can recognize this. So if k is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to d then p of n equals o n to the k yeah all right so okay wow it's already solving it in general if a function p of n has a complexity of o of n to the k where k is constant this means that the growth rate of the function is proportional to n to the k as n increases if k is greater than or equal to d this means that the function grows more quickly than any polynomial of degree d this is for example if k is equal to 2 the function grows at a rate proportional to n to the second this means that if the input size is doubled the number of operations performed by the function will increase by a factor of 4 yeah so that's you know n to the squared n squared in general the larger the value of k the faster the function grows therefore if k is greater than or equal to d the function will grow more quickly than any polynomial of degree d. So okay, it gave me an explanation, but the question here says, use the definitions of asymptotic notations to prove the following properties. So I'm gonna take this. Can you prove it? All right, here we go. To prove that k, to prove that if k is greater than or equal to d, then p of n equals big O of n to the k, we can use the mathematical definition of big O notation. Oh wow, okay, here we go. So mathematical definition of big O notation is as follows. And it gives me the rule f of n equals O of g of n if and only if there exists positive constant c and what is that n zero and such that zero is less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to c times g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. I'm guessing that's n naught. So wow, okay, this is really crazy. We can do this by first noting that P of n is a polynomial of degree d, which means that it can be written in the form. Da, da, da. So the math, the math symbols aren't the greatest here. So it's using the asterisks and you know the the carrots to signify. So if it had some sort of latex writing, I think that would go. We got a network error here again. I'm gonna give it a dislike. Um, but yeah, it can even help you with your homework by just giving you proofs and explaining it pretty well. Like like the rules it was using are correct. So yeah, you can see it has like knowledge of these theorems for any two functions. And then it has knowledge of all this, you know, all this stuff and it can piece it together and really tell you, you know, it can really help you with your homework and it can kind of explain it. Really, really cool. But of course, you know, you got to be careful using this in your classes because, you know, you got to do your own work, obviously, otherwise you're never going to learn. But yeah, chat GPT. This is really, really crazy. With things like GitHub Copilot and then this like showing, I think it's really cool to have like one thing aggregate all this knowledge around the internet and now I can talk to people. So it's like it's like Google on steroids. It's like if Google was a person. I think this is really, really cool. But I don't know what the future holds, so let's hope it doesn't go all Terminator on us. So yeah, like and subscribe for more videos like this.